to throw it. He's got time, now running out of time, rolls to his right. Throwing deep down the field, lots of defenders. Is it caught? It is. It's a Central Michigan touchdown. How about that? <laughs> Central Michigan visited the Carrier Dome for the first time since 1999 on Saturday. Wow, was it a great game. We've got the recap for you next on Chippewa Rewind. Welcome into our third show of Chippewa Rewind presented by the Morning Sun. I'm Adam Jaxa alongside the head coach of your Chippewas, John Bonamigo. Central Michigan lost an overtime thriller on Saturday afternoon to Syracuse 30 to 27. Not the result of course that you wanted but I thought your kids really battled hard. Well I agree. I think uh, they played exceptionally hard. Uh, battled back to get into the game. Never gave up. A uh, handful of plays that could have gone either way that, you know, maybe would have gone our way could have changed the outcome of the game. But we battled tough, played hard, and, and, you know, that's what we expect. You get the ball first, three and out, but then your defense gets a three and out. So then we look forward to your second drive and Devin Spalding gets you going with a nice run. Yeah, it was really good to see the, the run game get going finally. I know that we had struggled with that the last uh, first two weeks. Uh, you know, had a great week of practice, uh, really emphasized that part of the game, and, and it was good to, uh, you know, finally see that come to life a little bit. And how about Spalding through the year? He was good out of the backfield. Is he able to get upfield on this catch from Cooper? Well, you notice that, uh, you know, Syracuse being a big blitz team, big zone pressure team, they left a lot of zones uncovered underneath. Um, you know, what you give, sometimes you take away. So. Uh, you, you'd see that you're going to see that theme throughout the night. You don't get the touchdown on that opening drive, but you do take the lead with a field goal. Had to be pleased with some points to to take an early lead on the road, right? Absolutely. Anytime you can uh, ha finish a drive with points, it's good. We'd rather have touchdowns, but we'll take points. We push forward to their next drive. They come back, and uh, it was Dungy. Athletic play gets a pitch out to Fredericks and they get down deep in your territory. Yeah, they do a nice job there sealing the pursuit inside out. They cr a little wrinkle on their screen. They crack the linebacker, uh, option the next man out. And, uh, you know, they'd only shown five snaps of triple option in the first two games. We think we got 13 snaps of it yesterday. So then they have it down deep in your territory, but your defensive line comes up with a big stop here to keep them out of the end zone. Yes, again, we tighten down. Uh, I think that was the theme of the game. I think early in the game, first half, we uh, you know, gave up some plays. Second half, we were able to make some adjustments, get them stopped. That was a critical stop there to hold it, hold them to a field goal attempt. So it's 3-3. Three to three. We push forward, and again, on the next drive, screen plays were working well for you. You found Devin Spalding on this next one. Again, same principle, aggressive rush up the field. Here they're bringing six. We're able to get Stev uh, Spalding the ball with blockers out in front of them. Uh, big game there. Uh, you'll see us do that again and you know later on in the game the second half for even a bigger game. I know this was probably my fault. I jinxed it. Evie hadn't missed a kick last week. <laughs> I brought it up. He misses here. He's got the distance. That, that surface is a lot different. It's very soft compared to what we play on. So, uh, you know, sometimes it's a matter of a quarter of an inch or even less it makes the difference between hitting the sweet spot and the ball going through the uprights or in pushing it a little bit to the right like he did on that one. Coach Schaefer, right after that missed field goal, tries to take a shot. It ends up working. They get their biggest play to Ishmael for 62. Yeah, we get, let him get behind us. Uh, I am pleased, though, with Amari, with the effort here to you know, get, get him down and you know, let us have a chance to play another play. And then the touchdown, Dungy's able to get in on, again, the option. Yep. Uh, that was more of a read option there. He ducks it up inside. I think we over pursued a little bit. Uh, that kid's a good football player. He's going to do good for them throughout the years. And then we push forward later into the second quarter, 9.20 left. He's able to find Strickland for 25, and it's a 17 to 3 lead. Yeah. Um, you know, down there in the flat, uh, kid does a nice job there of uh, cutting the ball back against the green and gets in the end zone. Then you guys go on a terrific drive. It starts with a big pass to Ben McCord for 27 yards. Yep, a little boot action. 
again versus a blitz. You know, people live by the blitz, you die by the blitz. Uh, you know, Ben makes, does a good job, one of his many catches. Tell us a little bit about Joe Bocci. You go to him back to back plays here. How much confidence do you have in him near the goal line? Because you seem to go to the fullback a lot. An awful lot of confidence in him. I think it's really kind of been luck of the draw. That's not, you know, we have other plays in, but this, you know, you see him get open there on the play action. Uh, I think, you know, Coach Watts and our offensive staff have done a really good job of game planning in that area of the field, uh, knowing that we have Bocce as a weapon and Ben McCord as a weapon and that we can still try to run the ball in there. We, it, we're pretty tough to defend down in that area. All right, so we push forward. They do get a touchdown with about a minute 10 left in the half. A tough play in the back corner of the end zone. Yeah, really hard to defend. I thought we were in good position there. Just probably got a little bit late turning around to either knock it down or possibly even get the interception. So that makes it 24 to 10. Chippewas aren't able to score at the end of this half. What were your feelings going into this halftime? Well, we felt very confident. I think we knew we hadn't played our very best, especially on def the defensive side of the ball. Uh, you know, I, I, they're a confident group. We felt like we could play with Syracuse. We felt like we could beat them. We dug ourselves a hole. Uh, told them we were going to kick the onside kick coming out of the half. We had to be prepared to do, you know, treat it either as a uh, sudden change on defense or either a, uh, you know, a, a turnover on offense. We needed to be able to get points out of it either way. We'll talk more about that onside kick when we come back and break down the second half of play and overtime as the Chippewas were trailing at the break 24 to 10. That's all next when we come back on Chippewa Rewind. Start of the second half, the Chippewas are down 24 to 10. You try a little bit different approach and go with an onside kick to start the second half. Yeah, we felt like it was a risk worth taking. We had seen something on film. Uh, we were actually eight for eight in practice converting it and uh, didn't quite get the look we wanted. Uh, but we, we knew it was coming or that we were gonna try it. We challenged our defense and our offense to respond. Defense did a great job of getting a three and out and then offense responded with a 95 yard drive. So. Uh, I think it was a, a risk worth taking. Let's take a look at that 95-yard drive as we start the second half. It starts off with a big screen play, and you talk about that risk-reward. Risky to run the screen in your own end zone, but when you do get it, you get 48 yards. Yeah, we did a great job there of, uh, of blocking against that. And then, you know, Devin um, make a man miss, broke a tackle, a uh, huge play in that drive. and. Uh, Gosh, just a, just a greatly executed play by our offense. Tight ends seem to be open most of the day. Ty Conklin's right up the seam here for 22. Yeah, we go with four verticals here. This is one of the times they did play uh, coverage. Uh, well-timed route, uh, well-timed throw by Cooper. Ball, gets the ball right out on his fifth step. Drops it right in over the line, linebacker in a soft area there. Great throw and catch. Spalling's been running hard all day. Gets his reward here with a two-yard touchdown. Yeah, he does a nice job here cutting back against the grain and then finding in the end zone. We're going to push forward to the fourth quarter. Cooper played a tremendous game, does make a mistake here, and fumbles the football. Yeah, this is one of those things we, we, uh, we kind of get beat outside there. He does have two hands on the ball, ball in the pocket there, which is what we do want. Uh, their guy makes a great effort, reaches out, swats it, knocks it out of his hands, and we turn it over. Now, what do you say to Cooper at that point? Because it's a critical point. Obviously, he's upset. How do you handle that as a coach? I just tell him, you know, hey, don't worry about it. I can't get that one back. There's, there's no use in, in uh, you know, dwelling on a mistake. I mean, especially something like that where he knows, clearly knows what happened. You know, you got to let it go and move on. And how about the next play? Amari Coleman picks him up. A great interception. Yeah, so we go back to back here. You know, uh, they test us. You know, Amari does a great job there, perfectly in phase, uh, and, uh, you know, we get the ball back. Any chance he's going to get a look at receiver next week? That was a pretty good catch. <laughs> I don't know about that. I think we need him right where he's at. <laughs> All right, so they do end up stopping you on that drive, but then you pin him back. Blake Serpa played fantastic in that second half, gets a sack here. 
Yeah, nice job by Blake. Just good, relentless pass rush by all those guys involved. We knew it was important to make sure we kept that kid in the pocket, not let him get, get out and beat us with his legs. They did a good job there, and they're rewarded for it. So trying to drive again, Cooper Rush throws into coverage, and he gets picked off this time. Yeah, um, you know, just a little miscommunication there. Uh, over ball, a little bit overthrown. Again, another one of those that you'd love to have back. So 413 now left in the fourth quarter and uh, a couple big plays here. Serpa and Hamilton combined to get this in the backfield. Yeah, this was that area of the field. I mean, we're sitting there with two timeouts and I'm thinking, do I need to, to, you know, I wanted to save the timeouts for the offense, but it was important, for, gosh, for our defense to be able to get the stop. And uh, because if they do get another first down, now you have to start using your uh, timeouts to get the clock stopped so that you make sure you get in, you know, have time when you get the ball back offensively. So that was a really critical point in the game. Uh, our defense responded very well and, uh, you know, we get them to, to punt the ball back to us and get a partial block on it and, uh, you know, set up the two minute drive. Yeah, so it was a short field after that interception. They return it to the 50. As you said, your defense comes up with a big stop do get the partial punt block, and then you get the football with 2.16 left, the Ben McCord drive. Right, two timeouts still. Um, you know, there's a great job here by uh, Cooper finding Ben. Uh, ben does a good job of making the catch and getting out of bounds. Syracuse stops you, and they put you in a fourth down situation. You obviously have to go for it to try mm -hmm. and score, but a perfectly executed play. And again, it's McCord that makes the catch. Yeah, nice job there. You know, I don't know what happened there with the secondary, but they dropped coverage on Ben. You know, Cooper's able to find him. And again, he picks up the first down and gets out of bounds, which is a big plus. Now, an interesting situation, there's 15 seconds left after a sack and Coach Schaefer for Syracuse takes a timeout. What's the mindset of the team when you bring them over and give them the instructions for that final play? Well, they helped us out a little bit there by taking the timeout, you know, um, yeah, I'm sure he wanted to see what we would come out and make us go to our, our next best play. Um, you know, at that point in time, I'm just trying to get everybody, they understand the situation, and I want to let the offensive coaches communicate, you know, whether it's Coach Watts to Coach Caduli, you know, make sure that, that uh, they're in the best play call that they can get and uh, worked out for us. All right, well, let's take a look at that final play. 15 seconds left, Rush able to move around and finds McCord in the end zone. Yeah, and, you know, in this situation, obviously, you want to try to get the ball in the end zone, call it deeper out. Cooper does a great job there scrambling out. Uh, ben does a great job of going up, making the play, hanging on to the ball, touchdown, and it's, uh, it's a one-point game at this point. All right, I got to ask it. Any thoughts to go for two in that situation, or you just want to tie it up? I think the way our defense have been playing, we were, we we're happy to go into overtime uh, with the tie game. Uh, you know, I think, uh, you know, going for two, you know, there's always a consideration, but I just, I just think that, you know, to put it all on one play, uh, you know, especially the way we've been playing the second half, I thought the, the smarter thing to do was to let it go to overtime. 24-24, of course, the Chippewas go to overtime. You have to be feeling pretty good, right? Because your team's got all the momentum, they come back, and then you're heading to the extra frame. You feel great at this point. All right, well, let's take a look at the overtime period now. Again, Devin Spaulding, terrific game. Starts you guys off strong with a big 19-yard run. Huge run there. Uh, all the way down the six-yard line. Uh, just well executed all the way across the board. Offensive line did a great job. And... Uh, you know, it's a great way to start the overtime period. Now this is the third and goal play. You give it to Spaulding again. He wasn't able to get into the end zone. Yeah, I think we just missed the cut there inside. Uh, you know, we end up settling for the field goal. Got to go back and play defense. Again, three for three on the day on fourth downs. Were you thinking at all, hey, let's try and get the touchdown or do you just want to get the points? You know, I just think at that point you really have to get the points. You, you want to, you know, uh, you want to keep playing. And then we, we push forward, of course, the play that ended it, the Fredericks touchdown, as he's able to hit the pylon on the far yeah, side. Yeah, it's, um, again, a uh, tough way to end the game for us. Um, you know, tough to even watch that play, frankly. So the Chippewas do come up just a tad short, 30-27 to 27 the final score. What do you learn about your team after watching this game? Well, I think we learned that we've got a, kids, a lot of kids that uh, they got a lot of heart and a lot of fight in them. And, uh, you know, it's a long season. There's still a lot of football to be played. 
and uh, you know we just have to find a way to get over the hump and and uh, win those games when they get into into those situations. All right. Well, the Chippewas have to get prepared for their next opponent, a top five opponent, Michigan State, as Central Michigan travels down to East Lansing next weekend. We'll take a look at the Spartans when we come back on Chippewa Rewind. Hey CMU fans, experience Central Michigan University and all there is to do around campus by visiting Ticket Central, your one-stop shop for all your favorite CMU events. Ticket Central staff is ready to greet you with a smile and assist you with all your ticketing needs. Whether it be for athletic events, plays, concerts, and more, we've got you covered. For further information, you can visit the atrium of the Event Center Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. or give us a call at 888-347-347. 3872. At Ticket Central, we're here to help get you wherever you want to go. Next Saturday, the Chippewas will be back on the road as they head just down the road to Spartan Stadium. Michigan State, a really good team coach. What makes them a top five team in the country? I think uh, they've got great coaches and they got great players. And, uh, you know, it'll be a big challenge for us. Tell us about Mark D'Antonio and what you can expect from a, a team that he's coaching. Well, you know, his signature trademark has always been, you know, tremendous defense. However, I think their offense is equally as impressive. I think uh, he's had tremendous continuity within to his staff. They've done a great job recruiting. They've got a great program. Uh, you know, tremendous respect for him, uh, for his staff, and everything that they've been able to do. And like I said, they're they're – they're number two in the country uh, for good reason. I, I personally think they deserve to be number one. And uh, it'll be a big challenge for us, and uh, we're looking forward to it. I know you personally have never been to Spartan Stadium, but most likely it's going to be the biggest crowd you'll play in front of. What's that going to be like for you and the guys? It'll be exciting. Anytime you get to play in front of a lot of people, it's, it's always fun. I'm expecting there to be a... a a, a good number of people there wearing maroon and gold is along with the green and white you know we probably won't outnumber them but you know they'll be there they'll make a lot of noise and and uh, we hope to give them something to cheer about yeah and the good news the Chippewas have had a little bit of success against Michigan State down there in East Lansing yeah it's been a little while but uh, we have managed to go down there and win a couple football games all right coach well you're looking for your second win we hope you get it there on Saturday I certainly do too uh, thanks again, again for everybody that came out and supported us we had a decent showing there in Syracuse. Expect a, a good turnout in Spartan Stadium at Michigan State. We'll have a great week of practice preparing. We'll go get after them and uh, fire up chips. All right, Coach. Well, that'll wrap up this edition of Chippewa Rewind. We'll see you again next week as we break down the Chippewas game against the Spartans. For Coach John Bonamigo, I'm Adam Jaxa. Thanks for joining us. <laughs>